Okay. So, can somebody give me the definition that you found for what a logarithmic function is? What do you got? Exponentine, okay. It's the inverse operation of an exponential. Okay, so it's the inverse operation of an exponential function. Okay, so basically what it allows us to do is the warm up that we did today, where we were trying to find how long it takes for the 16,000 to turn into 7,000. Well, we had to use Desmos in order to solve that equation. Okay. Well, logs allows us to solve exponential functions algebraically. Okay. So we'll get to that part later. But today we're just going to talk about logs, what they look like, um, their values, and so forth. Okay. So this first part, they give us this exponential piece. So this equation that is drawn is 2 to the x. Okay. So they tell us that we're going to draw the inverse. Okay, so if I'm given a bunch of ordered pairs, how do you come up with the inverse? Okay, so you flip the, the x and the y. So I'm hoping that you drew something like so. Okay, so this is our inverse of the given, and it is for surely the function the log base 2 of x. Okay. So the first little portion of this kind of starts to familiarize you with log notation. Okay, so these little pieces here. It is telling you that the inverse function is in fact the log base 2 of x. Okay, so what they're asking you to do is what is the log base 2 of this right here is your x value, 0.25. So if I plug in 0.25, what would the corresponding y value be? Okay, so we're just simply using those ordered pairs from the graphs above to fill in this table. Okay, so um, the log base 2 of 0.5 is negative 1 and so forth. Can I kind of move on past that? Okay, now when I read that, did everybody understand the way I said that? Or at least hear the way I said that? Okay, so when I'm reading this right here, you say it as the log base 2 of 0.25. Okay, so that's how it's read. Okay, so the 2 is like a little subscript. Okay, so um, talking about what we see up here, okay, this first question says, explain why the domain of our function, 2 to the x, doesn't have to be restricted. Okay, so if you're trying to decide if we have to restrict the domain, can you remember back to when we did have to restrict the domain of functions, which function did we have to restrict the domain of? The quadratic ones, the parabolas. Okay, so um, do you remember what test you can use to decide? Okay, very good. Okay, so just to decide if we have to restrict the domain or not, you can do a horizontal line test. Okay, so if I'm looking at that black function there, does that function pass the horizontal line test? Yeah. Yes. So do I need to restrict the domain? No. no. So um, we can say um, f of x passes the horizontal line test. So no restriction is needed. Okay. Uh, next they ask us about the domain. Okay, so now we're using the log of base 2. So that's the green one. Okay, so if I'm thinking about the domain, how far to the left and how far to the right does this function go? What's the domain? Okay, good. And does it hit 0? Do we include 0? No. I would write this part down specifically. The domain of logarithmic functions exists from 0 to infinity. Okay, what is my range? OK, 
Okay, so it goes down all the way up. So from negative infinity to positive infinity, good. Um, did you find any intercepts? Did you find an x-intercept on that graph? Okay, where was the x-intercept? At 1, good. And that's a really important piece right there. That x-intercept is going to be our reference point. Okay, so we'll get into that a little later, but um, that is a point of an important point. Where did it cross the y-axis? It doesn't, right? So it gets infinitely close to the y-axis. I'm going to write, uh, let me reset. I'm going to write no y-intercepts. Okay. Um, did you find any asymptotes? Okay, there is one. Is it horizontal or vertical? Vertical. It is, it is a, a vertical asymptote, and it's right at the y-axis. So this, this bottom hand right here coming down is getting infinitely close to that y-axis. Okay, so we do, in fact, have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. Okay, so what kind of shift will move a vertical asymptote? Hmm? I didn't hear what you said. Whoever it was. I, not the K, but the H, the left or right movement, right? Okay, so vertical asymptotes get moved left and right. Okay, for number four, um, where is the function increasing? Okay, so where is it going upward? What x interval? What's that? Close, really, really close. From zero, yep. So from that asymptote onward, it keeps increasing, okay? So this function is increasing from zero to infinity. Notice that we do not include zero because it doesn't touch it. Does it decrease? Nada, okay? No decreasing. It always increases. Which is kind of interesting because your exponential functions also only increase. Okay, can you tell me about the end behavior? As x approaches positive infinity, what happens to my y value? Where does it go? So that right hand goes to infinity. Okay, and we can't say that it goes to negative infinity because remember that horizontal asymptote that it stops at? So we're going to say as, yeah, as x, as x approaches 0, what happens to my y? Goes to negative infinity. Good. Okay. Now question number 6, this is a biggie. This is the part that allows us to do conversions. Okay. So... This is kind of a confusing way they state this, but, okay, so they're saying that our f of x is equal to 2 to the x, so the inverse is the log base 2 of x, okay? So this notation right here says we're going to plug 16 into the, the log, so this is going to be our x value, okay? So if this is our x, 16 goes here. Is that going to be an x or a y of my f of x piece? So now think about this one. Is 16 going to be my x or y? The y. Okay. So this allows us to figure this out. If I have 16 is equal to 2 to the x. Okay. 2 to what number equals 16? 2 to the fourth. Okay, so that means that the log of base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. Okay, so that means my function of 4 will equal 16.
Anybody want to do some jumping jacks? No. Do we need to pause? Wake up? There you go. Shake it out. Okay. Good jumping jacks. All right, so here comes, I don't know if you noticed this piece right here, but this is a biggie. Being able to convert between exponential and logarithmic pieces. Okay, so grab your highlighter. You got this part? Oh, good. Okay, so in your notes, you got it? Okay, so you're going to write our logs. Okay, so let's say, um, oops, not logs. I, right, right. Exponential. Let's start with exponential. Okay, so we understand exponential form, right? If I say 2 to the third, 2 to the third equals 8. Okay, so now let's say I say the b to the x is equal to y. So using variables so that we have the ability to convert. Can anybody tell me what my logarithmic form will be? Log of base b of y equals x. Very good. Okay, so get your highlighter. Oops, wrong button. I don't have a highlighter. Oh, then get your pen or your, just circle it lots of times. Okay, so this is the piece that's going to allow us to solve exponential equations as well as logarithmic equations. Okay, so we'll be using this a lot. Okay, so the first part of this is just practicing converting. Okay, so for question number five, um, what is it currently in? Which form? Exponential. So what is the logarithmic form of number five? Log base 5 of 125 equals 3. <laughs> Keep going. Another example, or is this, you guys got this? You got this? I had to do four examples during the second period. <laughs> They, yeah, same thing. So, like, this one would be... What? Oh, yeah. Should I finish what I'm writing? Equals negative 2. Oh. Is that what you're looking for? Good? Okay, Nicole, you still with me? I'm almost done. Don't go away yet. Okay, what about number nine? If I'm in logarithmic form, what's my exponential form? Okay, and that should make sense, right? Like we can test that out and say six to the fourth. Oh yeah, that is equal to 1,296. Okay, so quickly what I wanna do is show you how to type the log of base six of 100 or 1,296 into your calculator. So grab your calculator, this is a good tip. Okay, so if you're going to type in a log that has a given base, you are going to type alpha window, okay? Alpha window, and you are going to choose option number five. Wow. Alpha window is up by y equals. Okay, so we can type in log base 6 of 1,296. You can also do math alpha a and do the same thing. Yes. So if you just remember that typing math alpha a, that's that works too. It's like it's like um, yeah yeah right. boom boom boom. Yeah. Oh, that's because you can't type in a variable into the calculator. 
Math, alpha, math. If you, yeah, if you hit math, alpha, math, that'll take you to the log as well. Okay. So everybody good there? I'm almost done, I promise. Okay. So the last part is talking about common laws, logs, no laws, that's a different class. Okay, so we got common logs and we've got natural logs. So write this down so that you know what a common law is. Okay, so a common law has its very own button on the calculator. Okay, it is the LOG button. Did you find it? Okay, so if you type LOG of 19, did you find it? So log is right here by the 7? 1.27. Okay. You got what? 1.28. 1 1 Did everybody find it? Okay, now hopefully what you're noticing is that it didn't pop up with a base. Okay, a common law will a common log will always have the same base. Does anybody know what base that is? Yeah. Ooh. It is in a base of 10. Do you know why it's in a base of 10? No, that is common. That's <laughs> common. It is common because uh, that's how we count. We count in a base of 10. So um, way back in the caveman days, they said, I have 10 fingers, so I'm going to count with my digits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and it starts over. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, so forth. Okay, that is simply the base of 10, and that's why the log, the LOG, is, is that. So this is, make sure you write always in base 10. Okay, now the natural log also has its own button. Did you find the natural log button? What is it? LN, which doesn't that seem backwards? Long natural. Yeah, right? It's like backwards in your brain. So the natural log, if you type that one, what'd you get for ln of 19? What'd you get? 2.9? 4? 4. 4. 4. 4. Anybody know what a natural log is always in a base of? Ooh, how did you know that? Because if you press second, e, or then natural log, it's the opposite. And the same with long log. Yeah. So E, they give they give the natural log its own button just because um, you end up seeing E very often. Okay, so it occurs so often in our natural world that it's just very important. Um, oh, last thing I want to tell you about is uh, I'm just going to give you the formula to convert uh, pHs or find pHs. Okay, so just write this in your notes. Hold on, let me find it. Oh, did I go way too far? Oh, that was weird. There it is. Okay, so the equation for converting pHs is the log of 1 over the concentration given. Okay, so that concentration will always be given. It is literally a plug and chug into the calculator. Very simple. But without that formula, you would be lost in making educated guesses. And I would probably look dumb. Yeah, good. Okay, so that should be enough information for you to mail down the assignment for today. And it's not so, HRW, is it? open your HRW and get to work.